off significantly. How did that happen? They've just taken an hour, have they? No, half an hour. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hello, hello. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Nice to be here. Thank you very much for making us feel welcome. Um, as you can see, we're going to go to a different continent. And it's very interesting to hear these different parallel stories and intersections. And um, uh, my name is Helen Shears, one of the authors of this presentation. When I first realised I was going to do it, Roland was so welcoming, saying, I saw your presentation in France. And I was like, oh, oh of course, yes. We're already here in this continent in earth building circles a little bit, which is very exciting. My name is Helen Shears, and uh, one of our founder members is here as well, Amanda Centeno. Fatima Medina is back in Nicaragua doing what she can there, and sometimes in Mexico, in La Uma. There's a Mexican here somewhere. Yes, in La Uma, <laughs> in the University of um, Environment there in, um, near Mexico City. So what we I'm going to talk about today is... Um, Integral Technical Training for Women in North, Northern Nicaragua. I'll come here, it's probably better. Um, uh, and more recently, we are working in earth building. It's a project that's been going for over 30 years, so it's maybe of interest to some people. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're in a difficult position here in Nicaragua. I have been here for a year now, in the first time for 25 years. Um, partly because of the situation, uh, the, cur the current country is going through a deep crisis, like many other countries, but this one particularly is because of a dictatorship and corrupt government, and so the students rose up last year in April 2018, and so this has affected day-to-day -day life and has, has been going on for a very long time. There's a lot of international pressure and pressure in, from the country itself and a lot of exiles and... Um, we're hoping that this will improve and there'll be, we'll be able to go back to a normal life. And our, um, many people have been exiled, like I say, and, and um, organisations have been temporarily or permanently closed down until there's change. So there's a lot of support for the students' movement and in every part of the country there are people very actively involved, including um, women in our organisations. Um, we're, there's a deadlock, basically, so we hope for better times. Um, and the context in general, yes, as we know, Latin America has been through many struggles against dictatorships. Nicaragua is particularly known for the Sandinista Revolution in 1979. Many of you may know more or, or not about it. And that's 40 years ago. We're again, going to celebrate 40 years of a revolution, but it's actually been celebrated by another revolution at the moment. So... Um, that is the context. It's a very vulnerable context politically. Um, and also, as you can see from this picture, there's, it's an area of uh, a lot of earthquake, seismic activity, and um, floods, and, um, and other natural, natural disasters. But maybe, can we put this down to obviously climate change and the climate emergency, which is very much felt there on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's a completely different context to here in some ways, but we're all living it throughout the world. Um, there has been, since the 70s, obviously a very strong solidarity network and support for Nicaraguans' struggles. Um, during this time, obviously, the f feminist movement is very, is very much known in Nicaragua for being very consolidated and strong and organised. And that was a, came out of the revolution and is now an autonomous women's movement. Many of women are critical of the current um, organisation as well. So, um, sorry, government as well. So we come back really where to where we've come from. Um, Association of Women Builders of Condega. I went as a I was volunteer, as a carpenter, and then was a development worker for seven years through when there was a hurricane there and did a lot of emergency work then, and um, then was on the, on the payroll for a long time, and now I'm an advisor as we hand the organisation over to younger people. Um, I'm continually collaborating with the organisation and um, very, feel very privileged to be able to be part of it. Um, the current mission and vision is for the last, we do five-year um, strategic 
planification. Um, uh, sorry if my English is a bit Spanglish. <laughs> sorry, yes. I haven't done this um, in English before this uh, presentation. Um, so the mission is AMCC, which is Association of Women Builders of, of Condega, is an autonomous women's organisation with 30 years of experience in technical training and women's rights. It provides in integrated education in, in a safe environment on its own site with space to experiment, providing conditions for the development of young people and adults' capacity building and the promotion of environmentally friendly practice. The vision is AMCC is a space for women trained in rights, built of clean and appropriate technologies, which promotes an inclusive, diverse, investigative and democratic culture Young women experience their potential in a healthy and natural environment, contributing to building a fair, equal and sustainable society. This is our dream. Many, some of these ideas on my behalf have come from visiting CAP since I was uh, quite young. <laughs> so, so you can see, this is what, one of our buildings, um, earth buildings, but we'll see more of them later. This shows Nicaragua. Um, we're up in this, in this area here in the north near Honduras. Um, just briefly, I'll try and rush through the historic part to get focused on the earth um, work that we're doing, build, earth building. In 1987, before I went, I went in 1994, eight women from Condega built a primary school with the support of a brigade of colleagues from the United States. Subsequently, the local group sought and participated in other similar projects and sites. Um, this is when Amanda got involved in 1990 or at the end of the 80s and the group raised its own funds to build their own premises which was a previous one to the current one and diversified their experience in other trades. The group got legal status in 1990. In 1998, after Hurricane Mitch, 32 houses were built between 1999 to 2001 by 25 women working in all trades with the help of international volunteers and other skilled and non-skilled people. We have some um, compañeras here this, today who have, were um, part of that support from Sheffield and there's, there's B and other people here who may have known and been part of some of the support that we got from Sheffield and New York and other places at that time. AMCC directed other projects and sites in and out of the municipality for other projects, particularly women's projects or projects that particularly want to visibilize women working on site. <clears throat> Situations like these showed the ability of women to transform a disaster into an opportunity, which we always are striving to do. Here we should see some carpentry and some building going on. <laughs> in 2005, we because the organisation had been going for quite a while, there was a systemised um, archive of information, and so we were able to look at the, the, the first 10 years of the organisation's life, particularly the teaching and learning methodology, learning by doing hands-on, practical work, which was the mo well, one of the most novel as aspects of the organisation. The Women's Technical Training School was founded, accredited by the National Technological Institute, Inatech, which at the moment we are finding difficult, having difficulty to maintain that because of the political situation. But it was a, a great um, obstacle to have passed to be on the sort of official certification body um, in Nicaragua, and particularly aiming to get young women to get into the trades. <clears throat> so at that time, there was basic level technical courses, basic carpentry, e electric welding and electrics one year long courses, so the organisation always had the experience of in being in um, doing building as well. So this is when we started to experiment with um, Adobe, um, particularly at the beginning, as we worked with an, an architect who was very much promoting um, the, the revival of Adobe and the improvement of the quality of Adobe in Nicaragua at this time. So the, our curriculum, we managed to include um, short courses in renewable and craft technologies, zinc soldering of silos for grain storage, which is very necessary for the rural communities, photovoltaic energy systems and wood carving, to sort of do courses which didn't require a whole year of commitment and try and aim to other people who were just more available to do short courses and, and do courses in, which um, were attractive to people locally in the rural communities. 
At the same time, they began to experience, and we, or we, or they, we began to experience and learn about improved Adobe techniques and work with local builders, some who had um, an open mind to improving their Adobe techniques, as well as being completely closed and saying, no, it's not worth it, it's, you've got to use cement. But anyway, we, we fought on with our architect and with our, build, with our women who were determined to um, sh show that this was a sustainable and appropriate construction system, the adobe being a local tradition. <clears throat> in, so parallel to this, in, two, in 2009, we were already doing um, gender workshops, and so we expanded these workshops into a whole program. We have a now a, the technical school and the the um, Young Initiatives um, program, and then an institutional program. So we, am, we expanded this with young people to focus on, well, starting off by focusing on issues of sexual and reproductive rights. So that's, that's where they are, again, dealing with their body and what it means, the changes they're going through, the changes that they're finding, the different conflicts they have in their families, their communities, and they come to us and they have a space to... Um, share with other young women. So there was a group of women who was formed and called themselves Nasi para volar, born to fly, who currently continue in their program to do their many activities with their peers. And also this shows in this, um, these photographs the kind of murals we have that to, are to do with young women and young women have designed these murals in earth and earth paints and and plastering and techniques on their different buildings that they use. So we are trying to support them in, in their different areas of work. So just a brief history of um, AMCC. Born in the revolution a few years later, with the, the, with the strengthening of the women's, autonomous women's movement, there was a the first experience of a primary school. They built their own premises. Then there was reconstruction after Hurricane Mitch. And, um, meanwhile, there'd been small workshops, uh, sort of women's training workshops, uh, mainly focused on carpentry. That's where I was involved um, with other carpenters um, who came and taught. Um, there was a women's tech, the way we set up the women's technical school in 2005. We included the other courses, renewable energy improved Adobe courses, and the gender workshops, the strengthening young women's development, and then now we're on a new premises, self, where we have now, in 2012, we started to self-build of a new premises in Earth. Um, and now we've launched what we call the Technological and e Ecological Youth Centre, and we now find that we have, in 2018, another revolution. So, sort of history repeats, doesn't it, really? <laughs> So during all this time and this accumulation of experience, um, we focus very much on methodology, the methodology of learning by doing, because the best, um, as other people have expressed here today, the best way by learning is hands-on, having the practical experience and, and learning in an individual way what, how, what to your capacity. So we focus on teacher training to have models of women for other women, particularly. We do have men involved, uh, you know, we must express, but the, the focus is very much on women and women teaching women and men, so they, they have those, those new models. We have elaborated a curriculum since 2005, we've written and, written and adapted and then updated manuals, workbooks, and we will also include, especially for the longer courses, applied math, science, gender and small business model, modules, according to the group, and many of many kids obviously have had a bad time at school, so we try and re reinforce the, um, some classes for them, whatever they need. Then we have validated courses and now implement them on a regular basis. Um, and this has changed over time according to funding, according to demand, according to now the context. We have been training monitors, and particularly in the building area, and earth, earth building, and so we have got a very solid team of women, young women who've come from the rural communities. They've um, trained up as monitors and they're going back into their communities to work with some of their, um, uh, some of their uh, community leaders and family to, to work in earth building. So self-build and, and hands-on work experiences is a priority. I must add, I don't know whether it's come up, but yes, in the north of Nicaragua, 70% of um, 
housing mainly is built in earth. So it's a tradition which is from the area of vernacular. So what obstacles do women find when they come into construction and, and technical trades? How are we doing? <gasps> Young women particularly find themselves in, with a dangerous cultural environment where beliefs and myths and customs reinforce the sub subordination of women's bodies and lives. Models of family upbringing using power relations and control, traditional roles, social mandates, and the powerful male father figure, patriarchy, obviously. Social pressure at community and social levels mean that girls have to choose either to conform or take a cr critical position. So the stigmas and indifference and, and lack of empathy for women mean that those who do manage to break out of the scheme of things can often have to have families that are, are, can support them or other friends in their development. So they're, we're there to support them if they really they need to step out. When they re rediscover their abilities, they change their models and, and dare to live from a more conscious perspective, they can find a holistic and natural um, way of, of living and working. Ways of coexisting and participation in actions with other groups of women is um, where they find the support. So we are promoting an integrated education, which is women's rights and feminism, economics, technical skills and ecology. <clears throat> so the self-build we are doing with recuperating this local tradition. So in, here, it's, here it comes up as what is the vernacular um, building skill is uh, in a material. In Central America, the use of earth as a building material originates from the pre-Columbian times and is a heritage that contributes to cultural identity. In the northern zone of Nicaragua, 73% of buildings are made of adobe, primarily in Tacasal, similar to wattle and daub. Earth and construction is a viable system in economic terms and durability, critical about the invasion of imported goods to the market and the use of industrial materials. Building with raw earth, here we see a picture of different people, different students on our year long, uh, on our annual course, which is about a month long, depending on how ad adapting to different um, conditions and depending on the building we're building and the different experiments that we want to do with, with the students. So building with raw, with raw earth means that earth construction is a way of contributing towards conserving heritage and um, towards the an autonomy of women, working with women particularly. Um, AMCC is a place where young people have chosen a technical career. They can come and um, develop their skills related to their architectural engineering careers or they've just had other experiences through different tasks and work experience. So we began the new building and you can see different finished um, murals here, um, coming, people coming and doing their different practice um, from different courses or during courses. We, there are month, the monthly rendering and painting and repair workshops on the buildings which bring people together. So sustainable building also, also includes responsible waste treatment, rainwater harvest, green roofs and other use of the land. Um, we'll be doing more development of, of we have re reforestation but we also hope to have um, permaculture and in the future and the installation of photovoltaic energy system, systems and anything we are we are open to any kind of and planning different um, other systems as we go um, there's the list of courses that we do or we've done in the last five year period which is speciality courses and um, basic courses and the, roughly the percentages are we have 50 50 really women uh, women and men on the short courses and more women on the year-long courses because that's, that's very much focused on them um, doing parallel uh, training to their secondary school and, and primary school. So we focus very much on, on women for that. So the challenges and imp opportunities. There's the importance of a personal development at individual level to achieve collective development. Women to find their inner ancestral strength when they confront sexual discrimination by working in the trades and particularly in natural building. Experience of the AMCC combines feminist thinking with ecological principles, which is quite a novel and unique proposal, especially in Nicaragua. Um, we are supported by other, have collaborations with other organizations who um, recognize us for that. 
focus. Teaching and learning processes in which young women are involved and find their own capabilities improve their valuable contribution to the urgent need for social transformation. Earth building is associated with poverty in Nicaragua and now the organisation is working with the communities, making it more attractive aesthetically as well as structurally. The affordability of using sustainable materials as well as reducing the impact on the environment. It's a big challenge on how to reach out to more people as there is little or no support or interest from the government, universities and professional bodies, particularly in the consumerist context and under the current development model. On the other hand, there are many people individually or in organisations working with the renewable resources, recycling and reacting to the climate emergency. So hope keeps us going. <laughs> So just a few photographs just to bring us up to date. This is our site where we have built most of the buildings. The, that's, that's there, that's there, that's there. And then there's been some changes. But we have, yes, a, a, a model um, social house, which is actually quite big, but that's where the young women work from. And then we have a, a multi-use building and a, a kiosk, cafetine. And then we have our works, carpentry and, and welding workshops this side. Most of them in earth buildings, some of the renovated buildings that were existing on the, on the site before. So these are the buildings we have. Our multi-use building, which is the one, these were the first built, uh, these, um, earth buildings that we did. Our perimeter wall. Um, then we have our, that's the house for where the young women have their kind of work independently from a latrine a little kit another kiosk a laboratory to do experiments in and a kiosk cafetine which is like where we all meet up at lunchtime and coffee time um, these are more recent works with mural and more perimeter wall which were gradually going around some of the 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 site um, some rainwater harvesting and more murals, well, that one's come up a few times, I think. <laughs> and this is our welding workshop, which is where these two sisters from one of the local communities, they're doing a lot of their um, classification of all the different kinds of um, earth and colours that we're using. There's been a, we've got at least 30 different colours that we've um, collected from different parts of, of the local region. And they're kind of pounding them and sifting them and classifying them. That's when I went back in July, uh, no, sorry, in January for a couple of weeks, and they were working hard on this, so it was, gave me hope. Um, and there's some, some of the colours, maybe you don't see them very well on the screen, but so greens and reds and ochres, really beautiful colours, and um, how they're being stored and, and presented. And then this is the last uh, strategy which we had anyway, was to be doing more um, courses in the community, so... You can see some examples of um, decoration of people's houses. Obviously, we want to go into the quality of the structure, but we have to kind of grab people's attention. So it seemed, even though it seemed like the other way around, we thought, well, we have to go with the murals and the, and the reliefs and the, because this gets people engaged and in, involved and they can see they can actually make their probably quite rickety house into something quite beautiful. And then they can actually start thinking about maybe more um, improving structures um, in the future. But once we get people hand, getting their hands dirty and in there and just doing it, and, but making something really decorated and beautiful, that maybe that will get people involved more. So we have some amazing work, really, on people's houses um, and try and transform this idea that it's uh, an earth house is, 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 is your step before you have a concrete house, which is, we want it to be their house that they can live in forever. Um, and, they, and then come pe try and get, get people to change their idea about what adobe is and what earth building is since it's been in their culture for years, but we, want, we would like them to be able to, to continue using it. So our authors are Amanda, myself, Fatima Sanchez, and this is our lady, rammed earth a lady. <laughs> so, yes. So that's, I think that's everything. Oh, and this, we, we obviously work with many other organisations and Red Mesoamericab was the organisation that was um, present in France last year. And um, since not 2017, we've been part of this uh, space to share and engage experiences, resources and ideas about social production of sustainable habitat, preservation and re recovery of ancestral building cultures 
and earth building in general. CARB means earth in the Mayan language. There's more than 30 civil language, um, organizations, educational and training centers in Mexico, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. So that's where, in Mexico, where the, the main hub of organizations are, and we're down here in Nicaragua, um, not far away. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.